Hey Techno Studs! In this lesson, we're going to take a look at a hard disk drive and see how a hard disk drive operates and what to look for in a hard disk drive. A hard disk drive can also be called an HDD. A hard disk drive would be non-volatile memory. That is that we can store data on this for a long period of time, that the machine can be shut down and that data is still stored. Although I will mention there are times if we run out of volatile, that is like RAM, if we run out of RAM, sometimes what it'll do is it will create some storage space on the non-volatile, in this case an HDD, so that way it can still operate. Your computer can still operate. It's not an ideal situation because this type of memory that we have on our computer is much slower. Uh, with the media, uh, HDD is going to be our magnetic media with this. And um, it, so it also has a couple different form factors in which we'll talk about the form factors here. And then there's also di some different protocols and interfaces to it. From a form factor perspective, there's really just two form factors we should be aware of. There are more than just these two, but these are the ones that are going to be most prevalent that you're going to see out there. And one of them is the three and a half inch and the other is two and a half inch. We haven't really continued to develop this or try to get it into any kind of smaller container. And one reason is because solid state drives have become much more prevalent. But the other reason is that there are physical components in here of moving parts. And so it doesn't make a lot of sense to continue to invest into this older technology, trying to shrink the size of this smaller and smaller, especially since we've got a lot of moving parts in here and things that need to actually be spinning. And so you can only get it really so small. Over the years, there's been a lot of different interfaces as well, but the two main ones that you need to be concerned with is really SAS, which you're probably not going to see a lot of SAS drives in your early career. In fact, a lot of them are being replaced here, or SATA, and this would be an example of a SATA. So a lot of our drives, when it comes to this magnetic storage or hard disk drives, we use these SATA connections. When it comes to hard disk drives, the another thing that we need to be aware of is that this has a certain speed to it. That is, I can spin this, there's a motor that spins this around, and then this arm comes out and reads this. And so the faster that this spins, the more faster that we can actually read that data. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually put a little dot on here as a reference point. So we can talk about rotations per minute. There's something called rotations per minute, and I'm gonna put this on here. And when I spin that around, one full rotation right there, that's, so that would be one full rotation. And if I were to just do that once every minute, that would be a one RPM or rotations per minute. But let's say I wanna go faster. So now maybe I'm spinning it many times here. Maybe I'm spinning it around uh, every second goes around. And so now I'm spinning it at 60 rotations per minute. So that would be 60 RPMs. Well, these drives have certain ratings to them. And so maybe I want a faster drive. I, well, a, a faster is better. So they go up to 15,000 RPMs. That means that this spins around 15,000 times every single minute. And then what happens is this arm can then read that data faster because it's spinning around faster and it can read more data in a shorter period of time. So there's a few different options we have when it comes to rotations per minute. We have 5,400, 7,200, 10,000, and 15,000. And so one of the things we know that 15,000 would mean that the drive, we could actually read data faster. So why wouldn't we all always go with 15,000? And the answer to that is just cost. This 5,400 is quite a bit cheaper. And is only, like, that would be uh, work if we're just browsing the internet or you know doing some simple things and stuff. Uh, however, um, if we're doing things like video editing, then we might want something a little more powerful. If we're looking at servers, then we would want something definitely more powerful because there's a lot of read writes that generally happen on servers, not always the case. So we would choose based off of the cost and what application we're using this for, the need that we have for speed. Now there is a problem because this has to spin and write the data, these drives can be really slow. Even in the faster 15,000, 
when you're working with servers, it can be slow to write data to this. Writing data takes a little bit longer than reading data. And so what we need to do is there might be more data that's coming to this device than it has time to write to. So what happens is we have some caching that happens on these devices. We can see that there's a little board on the back here. Uh, same thing with this bigger unit right here. There's a little board, it's a control unit, and there's some chips on there. And one of the things that we incorporate into this is some caching, is some short-term memory. Think of something like RAM that it's storing some short-term memory on, waiting to be written to the computer. So when you have the higher-end drives, what happens is those cache those caches on these drives become bigger. So that way you can store more data temporarily before it gets written to the drive. So that's what this looks like. We've got some sort of temporary cache and it goes into those cache and then that's when it's waiting to be written to the actual drive. Something beyond the scope of this course, but I'm going to mention it just so you have a heads up about this, is there is something called a paging file. This is where when we have RAM on the computer, it creates that fast connection between the CPU uh, before stuff gets processed and then things that are come out will go to the RAM. There are times when we don't have enough RAM on a system. In that case, what will happen is the data will start being stored on your hard disk drive or your SSD or whatever. And we call that a paging file. It gets stored in a paging file. Well, as soon as that happens, that information that's being stored on the paging file becomes really slow in comparison to the rest of the data that's on your computer. And it used to be a big problem because we uh, RAM was very expensive. And so uh, we try to get away with less RAM. Nowadays, it's not as expensive as it used to be. So we don't have this issue as much any anymore, but just be aware that there's this paging file in case your RAM actually gets filled up, then we can use that paging file, but your system will be considerably slower once that happens. <laughs>